So let's go to Genesis. Um, there's a lot to be said. I'll start there, though. Anything in the... There's a lot to be said about the Hebrew language, how it was recorded, um, the poetry in it, the way it rhymes, the way they would write things a certain way to make sure it would um, line up. Like, the way they would, they used to record the Old Testament. Um, not even talking about the, the sacred way they would do their pens and all that, but they would count the letters of the page to make sure the same letter was in the page that they copied by hand. And if it didn't, they'd do it again. And this is handwritten copies. And if the Bible's pretty long, man, um, they were very studious with this. So when, when, when they say something in the Hebrew language, when they want to make a point, they say something like three or four times. So when you look at Genesis and you look at the first thing God gives us to ascribe our identity, he talks about mankind, humankind, as male and female. That is our first identity. We are male and female. Sex is not malleable. You cannot say, I am a man when I am a woman, when you're a woman. You can't, even scientifically, biologically, we know this. You can't say you're a woman if you're biologically a man. You just don't magically become one because you want to. Your wishes do not make reality come true. You are not God. Our, our first, and they say that three times. Uh, and the, God created them man and woman. Man and woman, he created them and he created them, I think it's three, I believe it's three times. I'm sorry, yeah, sorry. So he created them man and woman. That's our first, and that's one of the reasons, like in prisons, the people that molest specifically kids, because that's the younger, you're still learning your identity. Do molestation, do rape, are often the ones that are killed off more so than the murderers, when you think about it. That's our first, that's the first violation of identity. And we all understand that it's just so hardcore and precious to us that we, we it's, it's very sensitive. All right. That being said, we're, we, uh, we are identified um, by our gender. Now, there's a lot of uh, ways that... Uh, first off, male is made for female as far as female is for male. There are, we have different mentalities. That's, that's the first thing that separates us, but at the same time, we're still mankind. When God talks about mankind, he's talking about both genders, not just one. Um, and we, we can talk about sexism and slavery too, which is also not biblical. But that doesn't mean that people won't do it, right? I mean, you gotta, I mean, you have to you have to really identify ideas outside of the people's actions because people always get things wrong. They just they straight up do. So that being said, man is meant for woman, woman is meant for man. We can also touch on the topic of love. Love itself in America, we have one word for it. I love my car. I love my wife. One might be a little stronger than the other, or maybe you shouldn't have considered the love your wife part. I don't know. In in the Greek language, they have uh, four words for it. They have storge, agape, phileo, and... Phileo, storge, agape. Eros. All right. Eros is erotic love. Phileo is brotherly love. Storge is like motherly love. And agape is just general or fatherly love. I don't know. I, I don't know how ancient you want to go with the ancient, ancient Greek. Eros. Yep, yep, yep. I know the stream's kind of behind, so I understand you're probably on point with that. Oh, my face! You think after playing this level three billion times, I would not get hit by anything? Well, that's just not how it works, I guess. So, different concepts of love. Um, let's, let's go to the same-sex marriage thing. It's just same-sex relationship thing. Women will never truly understand men as far as the longing goes. Women will never truly understand, or men will never understand women, women will never understand men. There's lots of books written on this. Women are from Venus, Men are from Mars. I've read it by John Gray, very good book. Not the atheistic writer John Gray, but the actual, the, um, um, uh, the counselor John Gray, very good book. You should read it. It talks about love languages and everything else. How people, my, my love language happens to be works and affirmation. My wife's is touch and affirmation. So we, as long as we are good with our words to each other, um, you've got to learn how to express your love language, the other person's love language. So I have to literally be conscious to t like give her touch. Not, I'm not, not saying like erotic touch. I'm talking, talking about just like, you know, touches on the arm. And I have to do this because this is her love language. I don't do this unless I think about it. Mine is works. She's not lazy, but she will understand. She looks in my house and say, I can do a little extra, and my husband will really appreciate this. On the flip side, if she touches me, because that's her love language, I will have no idea she's showing me affection. 
well, you know, besides the obvious hormonal type deal, not we're we're talking about gentle little touches or whatever. Um, and if I do a lot of work around the house, she will not. I mean, she will care, but she will not care. She will not view that as an act of love. You we got to learn how to speak the language of the other person. Or you might line up with somebody that actually is the same love language as each way. Either way, you're still different in gender and you're constantly chasing something you can never really fully 100% understand, but you still try. It's that marriage relationship. You live in that relationship. When you cross that boundary and you go to the homosexual side, there's no longer something you don't really totally understand. It's something that you don't really have to. You don't, you, you will, you don't, it's not a chase you have to constantly do. It's not something you're going to want to do constantly, but never really amount to that understanding. It's a different type of relationship. Now, there's a uh, traditionally, so we'll go to the traditional part, the, the legalistic part, right? Why homosexuals would want to be married in a church when traditionally it's Christian, I do not know. Why, why even adopt that Judeo-Christian value unless you're just going to literally pervert scripture? And that's when you lead into like the inerrancy of scripture. Well, that was just made during that time. Now we can do whatever we want. Well, that's Catholicism does that where they warp scripture. They, they say scripture and tradition trumps scripture. Or they say, um, you know, creeds trump scripture. Or the times trump scripture. Well, scripture was meant for a reason. Um, Peter says, even though he experienced the revelation of Jesus Christ, he also says that uh, we have something more important than that, and that is the truth of Scripture. That is the Word. There's something pretty important about stuff that's written down and meant to be taken seriously. I'm coming, don't worry. There we are. Please. We are still trying to progress here. So, traditionally, marriage is between... It's a three-way promise, all right? You take the legalistic side of it, and you're devoiding it of the actual premise of the whole thing, all right? Atheists get married, why? So they can share, like, custody battles. They can have custody battles or attempt to split their currency. This is not going to hit him. Oh, it did! Oh, my gosh. Freaking genius. But it's a three-way promise. It's saying between you, your wife, and God. It's saying that I promise I will be true to you. It's exclusive. Uh, we are called as Christians to love everybody, but our wives specifically, and that's also prevalent in the Bible. We're taught to love every, God loved everybody, but he loved Israel specifically. It's very interesting when you look at it. The whole, the whole historic, especially like when they, when they get out of Egypt, the whole multi-generational process where God had to teach them and didn't have to be carnal anymore. What country are you from, Dark Striker? I forget. It's been a while. <laughs> anyway, so when you um, when you when you posit that, uh, you have to you have to like we went over the authenticity of scripture, right? Like it's amazing all this stuff kind of synergizes with itself when you when you Croatia, that's right. And well, when you when you violate one, it, it's no longer coherent, right? So if you get rid of the authenticity of scripture, well then why believe anything, right? Um, but so we, we talk, the, the value of love in America specifically, even in our just secular culture or materialistic culture, love is very narrow. Uh, if you ever saw the princess bride, love is all about a man and a woman, or I don't know, however you want to go with it, staring at each other, looking in each other's eyes for all eternity and just enjoying their presence. Well, this ignores reality on a, a, a few facets, right? It, um, First off, it ignores the authority. Um, your parents say, don't do this. It's bad. Don't listen to your hormones. You guys aren't meant for each other. You ignore authority. This also ignores the younger generation. It ignores the consequences. What happens when two people eventually subject themselves to their fullest hormonal urges? They have kids. And now we want to use abortion in our country as a form of birth control. Very bad. It ignores that reality that you were actually have to kill. You, you, you rationalize your way around it. It's not a person, it's a cluster of cells. And you know, my view is that science itself proves that two DNA, a new, brand new DNA strand is formed the second that the egg and the sperm meet. So, it, uh, I mean, science just tells us that. Ignoring that obvious fact is actually a violation of secular science. But you can violate truth and, and negotiate anything if you want to when you, when you get to incoherence. Anyway, so it ignores the authority 
and it also ignores the consequence. You are just in the emotion. You are, and this also goes hand in, like, it, it, it also is on par with, like, the, you know, what technology does. It gets rid of that reason. It severs the connection between reason and your mind, and then processing it, and exemplifies emotion. So, like, it, it's, like, to the nth degree in this generation, which is just crazy. Um, so, the other reality, there's, like, a threefold reality it ignores. The other, the other reality it ignores is it, it ignores the, um, there we go. It ignores the fact that you age. We are not here forever. You will eventually, first off, you were in the consequence first. You saw... And this generation seen it now, with like a 70% divorce rate, and especially in the black community, like in our, in our culture, the amount of single parenthood uh, children that are being raised without role models to see how a man and woman should treat each other. Because you just leave, why get, you can just divorce anybody because it's your right to. Instead of dealing with their responsibilities, they're more focused on their choice. Right? That's still very narrow because responsibilities also take in mind the consequences of your actions. So we have people who, are, who have been in the consequences and this next generation actually is looking kind of promising just for this reason alone. You want to have a good mother and a good father. I do watch... See, uh, we'll talk about Ben Shapiro in a minute. <laughs> he's, a, he's an interesting character. I'm going to write this down so I don't forget. So it ignores the reality. So we're in the consequences and the... the You'll eventually, and then you, you move yourself, which is the strength of our culture, right? The 18 to 30, 25 year old or whatever males is what the media still tries to appeal to. I think it's more going toward the female now, honestly, because our culture is very, it's, it's flipping itself upside down. Um, and then eventually, as a parent, you will be in the authority figure. You will be the person telling other people what to do. It's a, it's a false look of reality. Now, if you were immortal outside of time, that might work, but it's still incoherent as far as love goes, because then you don't have to subject yourself to the devotion. You know, your your wife is eventually going to get old. Your home, it, it's, it also is on the identity thing, homosexuality and homosexual marriage. You identify yourself purely by your hormonal urges. It's shifting sand under your feet. You're eventually, uh, you know, your hormones die, man. That's just reality. Uh, you're eventually not going to be attractive, I hate to tell you. I'm getting older now. There's people on this playing this game that are literally like 20 years younger than me, 25 years younger than me. It's craziness. So I, as far as legality goes, I don't think the government should inv be involved in any kind of legal marriage. I think it's ma majorly a social value. As far as the being on par like saying you can be a christian homosexual that is denying <laughs> you could be ugly in the first place i suppose you're right you could you're, you're just you're just denying the authenticity of scripture which if you spend a long time trying to justify your your faith to begin with just taking that and flipping it upside down and saying no nah, it turns out the bible is just whatever you want it to be well then how is anybody else supposed to take your faith seriously this is where we run into problems with like the different denominations like obama's church was the unitarian church i think and they believed that like you could do whatever as long as you're sincere about it and believe in god well you know if i'm sincere about killing my neighbor in the name of god hey there's a lot of uh, islamic authorities which will really vouch for that one so we, let's bring a shirk law into the, the whole mindset <laughs> how far are we going with this I always feel like I say that wrong. Shirk Law? It's Shriek Law. Something like that. Anyway. Dude, I'm glad I can play SK. I only, dude, I gotta leave soon. <laughs> Darn it! Soon is relative, right? How soon is soon? By the way, when's the last time you actually saw a TV series, show, or movie where the uh, male character was actually dominant and control and sure of himself? It's been a while. Where I, I'm sorry, let me put it this way: where a female, strong, independent woman character has not trumped him or put him in his place. Very interesting. You know, the 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 old old school Christian concept where the men man should be the the head of the household. Um, it's 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 still prevalent. It's still thought to be the majority. But at the same time, it's a. Uh, no, the media waters down. Secularism has control of the media and 
of the schooling. And that came about in like the 60s or 70s. Okay, so Ben Shapiro. I do, I do watch him once in a while. Just once in a while. And I'll tell you why. People are actually criticizing friends for not having any gay transgender people in it. Oh, the, the show Friends? Dude, you can criticize anything. And this is like, it's the same thing from why, like, it's, it's the same line of argument. Not even kidding. Why the, um, why Osama bin Laden would kill his own people. They're not Muslim enough. They're not woke enough, right? That's a word that Ben Shapiro uses a bit. They're not hardcore enough into their faith as much as we are. They aren't so equal that they, they show the transgenderism, like, that, the transgender people are not that, they're not a majority, man. The fact that they're not on any show is actually kind of, like, puts them on par with the percentage they are. So, in my study, <laughs> in my study of, uh, homosexuality, um, I, I, I have one, two, I have two books on this topic, and one that just touches on it briefly, so, um, we're into truth, right? So why is it that we have not found what causes homosexuality? Well, there's, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons for this. It's way more complex. Same reason I think why vaccines themselves are, um, you know, we are in way over our heads, to put it lightly. Um, the fact that there were only three when I was a child, now there's like 60 by the time you're age two, that's an issue. Regardless of what you think, we're all the long-term tests. That's impossible. There've only been like two generations. Um, why is the uh, the placebo not actually placebo? It's, it's the formaldehyde cocktail. Um, why is it hugely money-driven? Why is there a quota? Um, why did why does my ten-year-old child have to get a hepatitis B vaccine? What on earth is going on here? Um, why why are kids when they're at the most susceptible age have to be vaccinated? when their immune systems and their brains are still growing, when it, all vaccines go out of your system and are basically null and void after two to three years. Now, all this stuff is already known. So, like, I, I'm just... But people, like, they're like, LOL, I want a second opinion about vaccines. Second opinion is you're an idiot. And that is, it's completely ad hominem. They know that it's just being in one little realm of what you think to be truth. And I even had a doctor tell my friend, like, I'm the doctor, I understand this. And my friend was like, so you're not encouraging me to f look for stuff on my own? Why can't you just point me to a source with a uh, good material to read? You're, you're just saying I should trust you because you're the doctor? <laughs> like, and he was the guy who actually got me into looking at the vaccines. He was actually thinking, he's my, he's my best friend, by the way, that you should, uh, maybe, I, maybe I should vaccinate my kids, but later, after the, their bodies and brains are done developing a bit, because it might be good for them. Now, I think vaccines are good, when it comes to like visiting foreign countries, I know I just got on this freaking topic of vaccines. I'm so sorry. Um, ben Shapiro isn't. Oh, jeez, that doesn't matter. But <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. Ben Shapiro is, is uh, actually for. Oh, I hate myself. For vaccines, because he says his wife is a doctor, but I think he falls into that too. So I'm not 100% on point with everything Ben Shapiro says. He's an unorthodox Jew, which means he does not believe in Jesus. I personally think the guy's so smart. He just hasn't researched it. Because um, the, the, the facts are just overwhelming in pa on par with Christianity. And when I was a young man, I thought Christianity was the craziest thing on freaking planet Earth. Because my mom had it. And she was just all faith-based. And she like I had Magic the Gathering. I used to play that game. Literally professionally. I'd go to tournaments. And she burnt half my collection because she thought it was the, the devil. I wish I was kidding. I am not. My, I got friends that can vouch for this. So I'm just like, this is the craziest, most ludicrous thing. She's getting rid of my favorite toy. What is going on here? But I don't know how. But I started looking in the, the validity of faith, and it really hit me when I hit 30. So I'm 38 now. Eight years I've been studying this stuff. For basically daily. Multiple hours per day, right? Yu-Gi-Oh cards, dude, that's funny. <laughs> Believe in the heart of the cards. Because <laughs> it had magic cards? Oh my goodness. And I, you know what? I understand where they're going with that. But I, I think it's less the magic part and more just the worship of material possessions. Because even if you're an atheist, you still worship something. <laughs> Heart of the cards. Wim says my grandmother thought I was a child of Satan. Because I was a lefty. She whipped me with the belt. I used my right hand for everything. Are you kidding? Come on, man. 
not surprised. So, so this this actually brings up a good, an interesting topic too. Like, off just off the cuff, right? Uh, burning of witches, right? You can you can say Christianity has been caused with a lot of stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> when you when you bias yourself into one narrow frame of thinking. Now let me let me ask you this: Burning witches. If there are people with like paganism, Wiccans who do. <laughs> that's that's when I think so. I think <laughs> if you if you do believe there are witches and they do curse people and they do cause horrible things to happen now burning them might actually might not be you know just just okay first off let me premise this by saying modern culture should not be judged or, or ancient culture should not be judged by modern standards we've come a long way the judeo-christian worldview jesus himself has done so much to soften the hearts of man from its carnal nature you cannot deny this. It, it made our country the way it is. Islam would not make America. Buddhism would not make America. Hinduism would not make America. Shintoism would not make America. Shintoism is basically what the American Indians believe. Oh, it's the Creep Array special. My solution for younger looking skin. Waja must be sending me some more emails. Sorry, I had another pop up. So, anyway. Taking that in perspective, if there was magic and stuff like that in the world, and they were causing you so much grief, and the only way you felt to deter them was to burn them, or just kill them, or, you know, in the, in the Bible it says, do not suffer a witch to live. Now, burning witches, burning evil, burning people that embrace evil, you can you can see why there that might be a thing. Now, the problem comes when you have a a vast misunderstanding of what a witch is. Is a witch someone with a long nose? Well, no. But we're uh, burning those that, that go in favor of destruction and death. Well, there was a time when if someone was a child molester, you'd take them on top of a barn and you'd throw them off. Now what do we do? We counsel them. Now, you, you can say that's... And, and dude, this, this really came into, like... A, a different perspective when I read Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion, when he said he was molested as a kid and just described it as mildly embarrassing. I wanted to, like, reach into that book and just punch him in the face. Because <laughs> I picture my kids, if some guy molests one of my children, my foot's going through his skull. I'm not even kidding. Like, that's something I will just have a knee-jerk reaction to that might get me in prison. Uh, much as I love to forgive somebody and, and, and have it be a man of, of good tact and heart, Children are like on a, a totally different level. They're innocent. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> so there was a time where like people would look at this and be like, yo, uh-uh. And they just literally would throw him off the top of a... Of a they, then they'd stone him in ancient times too. You know, violating a child's innocence, sanctity, gender. The thing that makes the only thing that makes them them at that point. And it'll have vast repercussions for the rest of their life. By the way, they're trying to teach, um, actually they are, in certain places in California, teaching tr the, the, the history of homosexual and transgenderism. You want, you want to know a good way to mess kids up? I'm on fire, like a circus tent. T teach kids who are like 8 to 10 years old about sex, uh, specifically violations of it. That's a great way to mess somebody up. Let kids be kids, man. Come on. 